Welcome back to Black Hat, everybody. If you missed a few years like I did, then um, I hope you're glad to be here to see all of these happy people and happy faces. I am excited to talk to our next guest because he knows where where the company is heading and where it is right now in some very important areas. And uh, I'm going to start by letting you introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Paul Zimski here. I lead the uh, product marketing function at BlackBerry Cybersecurity. Uh, and pleasure to be here. Looking forward to talking with you. All right, thank you, Paul. And I know you. I know you say it may not be a pleasure to be here right now, <laughs> but but I appreciate you doing that. Um, a lot of the talk here at Black Hat, and it was true at RSA as well, is about AI. And it's because generative AI has come on strong, and we're seeing it just become pervasive. What is our take on it as BlackBerry? How should we be thinking about this if we're in the cybersecurity field? Yeah, I mean, AI certainly is getting a lot of attention in the media. It's transformative to us as in, end users even, and, and, and individuals in society. And AI has, has a, a long-rooted history in cybersecurity actually already, um, and a, a bright future ahead of itself. I think um, you can basically boil down the use of AI into two separate camps um, at its highest level from a cybersecurity perspective. There's what can we do from a predictive perspective using things like uh, machine learning and, and uh, deep learning and, and predictive AI to really sort of pattern match and behavior match on um, is the thing we're looking at good or bad and can we make a decision, uh, an accurate and high confidence decision on conviction. The other side of the coin uh, that we're seeing a lot uh, more talk about is with uh, gen AI lately, generative AI, the, 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 the large language models. Those are really good models at consuming a lot of, of context across a knowledge base and, and helping human beings sort through that uh, uh, from a sort of a, 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 an interactive perspective. So depending on where you're talking about from an AI perspective, there's, there's the models that defend you proactively and automatically, and the models that help you as a human being understand what you're looking at, come to conclusions, decisions, and, and take actions. And I, I think, and BlackBerry definitely thinks that um, there's a there's a need for both in, in cybersecurity. You know, uh, this is going to be shocking, but I think a lot of people in cybersecurity may not consider themselves experts in artificial intelligence, even though it's been around for a while. It is a very nuanced, uh, a very very deep and complex technology. There's also a few people that may not remember that uh, BlackBerry bought a little company called Silence, which happens to have the, the most mature and perhaps effective AI that's in use for cybersecurity purposes today. Talk a little bit about that heritage and how people can differentiate, because everybody they talk to now is gonna say, hey, we've got AI in our endpoint, but they're not all created equal, it's not all the same. Yeah, there's, there's a lot to sort of unpack and demystify out there. Uh, uh, Silence was founded in 2012. The first AI model was launched in 2014. So it's been at this game for about a decade now. And depending on who you talk to and what sort of pitch you're getting, you can hear a lot of different things. Like we've got more files and more attributes and, and we've got uh, uh, more generational updates. But at the end of the day, it's the outcomes that matter, right? You need to train your models on uh, the correct or the right set of files, the right set of attributes, do updates when it matters, all driving towards a defensive outcome um, versus a magic uh, number. Uh, and what we see when, when we actually uh, look at our models uh, and, and in, in, in situ or uh, in, in uh, from a battle perspective out, out in the world, yep. we see that we, we actually stop, uh, uh, we stop more than what other models out there are doing. Uh, we have third-party data that supports us. It says, by and large, we have a very lightweight, portable model that defends both internet-connected and offline devices. And that's happening uh, about 12 times faster and using about 20, 20 times less system resources. So it's all about, do you have a model um, that uh, delivers the outcomes you need, a defensive sort of blocking outcome, 
and, and is it able to do that quickly and, and performantly on the systems? Okay, there was a couple of numbers that you said very quickly, but they're very, very important. I think you said 12 times uh, more effective, 20 times less resources. Did I hear you correctly? Yes, 12 times faster, actually. So okay, what, all right. What we see is we block, on average, about 36% more than other leading uh, models. Out okay, only 36% more, and, uh, and, and, and only 12% faster, sorry. and only 20 times less resources. It, it really boils right. down to like that lineage that it's been at this for 10 years, improving yes. and iterating the model, got a, a, a knowledge and what it takes. Uh, uh, well, I'll back up. We set some very uh, uh, aggressive design parameters. We need to be able to stop things that are bad, not stop anything that's good, and do this all lightning quick with a, with a, a, a resource light model. Those are the parameters you start with. Then you've got to have uh, sort of the expertise and the knowledge in data science to say, what are the right uh, files and attributes and data sets that we should be trained on so that we don't overfit a model so that it, it, it can't predict or, or understand anything new and only convicts sees uh, what has been trained on. And then finally, you have to have a really good sense of how adversaries work. Uh, do you have a threat intelligence on a global uh, scale? Can you, do you understand sort of the, the changing landscape that, that you're, uh, that you're uh, playing? And all that comes together to ultimately deliver measurable outcomes. Because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. And those outcomes specifically and slowly are that that we do stop about 36% more novel attacks than other models in market, specifically when offline, but not always connected to an internet connection. We're doing that 12 times faster, so we're making the decisions um, roughly 12 times faster, and we're roughly using uh, uh, 20 times less resources. So we use around 5 to 6% of, uh, of the uh, uh, total C uh, CPU load on the system, but we see competitors running about uh, 90 to 100%. So one of the things that you said that I, I want to just dwell on a little bit is that the model, the AI that we're using, is not only compact, it's not only extremely uh, friendly for resources, but it also works with very great efficacy, even if it's not connected live to the to the web, to the cloud. And that is perhaps unique in the industry. It, it, it is unique in terms of, of measurable, demonstrable outcomes when we test. We know this because we tested, we've had third parties test this. Um, and it's really attributed to those, those aggressive design parameters that we started with is that we can't be relying on a system to be 100% connected to some cloud compute resourcing uh, to make all the, to make uh, defensive decisions. What happens if a system is intermittently offline or roaming or connected to uh, uh, a false AP? How easy is it for an adversary to just turn off a single IP or DNS per, uh, from a networking perspective and essentially um, downgrade the protection that all endpoints have? So this contained or lightweight portable AI uh, is really an edge uh, uh, technology uh, that we've, that we've uh, developed that, that, that really gives equal uh, or near equal protection whether a system is actually connected to uh, you know, the cloud or the internet or whether it's completely trying to defend itself in an offline mode. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take us up to the 20,000 foot level then we come back to, to 10,000 feet but the, the ability to function at the edge in the way that you just described is extremely important to BlackBerry because as a corporation, BlackBerry not only has this incredible IP for cybersecurity, it also is the leader in embedded systems, operating systems, real-time operating systems. It's very likely in the car that you and I drive and 235 million other cars around the planet that are on the road right now. Um, where Where is that driving? Is that increasingly edge devices need to have this level of protection. They need to be able to recognize a threat and convict in milliseconds, not minutes. And they need to do it even if they don't have a cell connection. They're not on 5G, they're not on the web. So it is really made to order for 
the convergence of IT and IoT that we see in the future. I don't know if you have any comments on that. Yeah, no, I, I actually do. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, good. Uh, when we look at you know, IoT or edge devices, right now the industry by and large is saying, hey, we've got to secure these. And we do that by saying they're there. Here they are, they're there. We've done uh, from a, a we've, we've done our due diligence in trying to design them in a secure, limited function way. But we do understand that um, these things need uh, 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 additional protection. They need a, a defensive layer. The difficulty is you can't put something that's that's tethered to the cloud that, that drains resources and takes time to make decisions. You have to have a field portable, a very lightweight, uh, contained way of deploying the security to that IoT device or to that edge device. And that is something that the Blackberries are converging uh, from our cybersecurity uh, uh, knowledge and, 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 and portfolio uh, across to our IoT and, and edge uh, portfolio as well. Okay, so let's stay at the high, at the high level for yeah. a moment and bring it back to generative AI. And what is the role today in cybersecurity for generative AI? Uh, AI? Um, what are perhaps some of the things that we're working on internally that we see that it could, it could really add value to make companies more secure? Yeah, I mean, Gen AI has a lot of promise in terms of making human beings more efficient and better decision makers. Uh, it, it's, you know, the, the large language models are really designed to consume a lot of uh, knowledge and context. Uh, and then um, interact with the human being in sort of a chat bot sort of mode. Uh, it can, they can do things like help you uh, uh, traverse um, knowledge bases uh, from a like, threat intelligence perspective, or be a really smart sort of clippy application, like help you actually use the tool that you're in, um, all the way to making, uh, helping you make better sense of, of, a, of an incident in, in a response motion. Um, so it's really, Gen AI is really about helping people traverse large sets of knowledge. And uh, it's definitely something that we've been uh, looking at internally uh, at BlackBerry. Uh, we have some, some POCs um, and um, really interesting use cases that we're designing to. But we've been pretty careful about not just releasing something um, uh, to claim the press release, but to, to, to implement uh, a, 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 a Gen AI in a secure manner and uh, a manner that actually drives outcomes for, for our customers. So we're in that cohort of companies that didn't participate in the hype cycle. We're waiting for the substance cycle for generative AI, and which I think is to the good. Um, what, what are some of the things that people can do if they want to learn more about what, what BlackBerry is doing to use AI to, to improve outcomes and how that is, is shifting and changing and morphing before us. Yeah, well, there's a few things. I mean, one, if you're here at the show, come come, come visit us at Black Hat. Uh, two is, you know, check out our website, read our press releases. We've, we've just announced some, some really interesting uh, iterations to our predictive AI model. Um, and really, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'd encourage everyone to look at, you know, do a POC and actually yes. see if these outcomes that we're talking about from a third party and validated perspective are what they're observing inside of their environment. And, and, and looking at AI holistically, um, both from a, a machine learning and sort of deep learning and predictive AI perspective, as well as a gen AI perspective uh, in terms of meeting their cybersecurity goals. Yeah, I think you and I both have talked to uh, customers that have, have done these bake-offs, they've done these proof of concepts, they've, they've tested products head-to-head, -head, and they end up becoming BlackBerry Silence customers at the end of the day. Yeah, that, that, that does happen. Uh, so, and, uh, and there's a real calming effect of deploying this sort of uh, model in, in an environment that's dirty or it's got a lot of, um, a lot of uh, uh, adversarial uh, movement happening. Like you'll see just, just a, a, a conviction rate and a, a, an automation of defense that really, um, from a proactive perspective, really think just breathing room to the rest of your SOC and the analysts to, to, to have a little bit uh, you know, more headspace in terms of doing detection and response. Okay, well, I want to thank you very much for spending some time with us, Paul, and going through this stuff. And uh, I want to thank the people that are 
oh, that are here at the show, uh, checking out Blackberry. And also, if you didn't make it to Black Hat, you're watching this later, I hope that you will take some of this and uh, that it provides uh, value to you. So, Paul, thanks so much. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate being here.